Hello again, it's Derek, and this is tutorial number three, and it's all about how to use the pop-up password on our applications at the iSchool. So without further delay, let's share a screen here. Our window machine, we should be used to again. Gosh, I hate that sort of thing. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't get anything on my desktop, nothing. And I have shortcuts to places where I keep things. And I am just me. So anyway, let's go here. Click on Firefox. And you'll see, I have said, but the home page is to the iSchool. And if we open a new tab, and then we go down and look here. Of course, it remembers us, lets us log in. And you see, we're still not signed in to our Firefox account. So <clears throat> all of this is done without the account because of the earlier tutorial. But the one thing I want to talk about in this very short tutorial is the nature of HD password. If we go here, dab HTTPASSD. Let's see. Oh. We should be about oh, here it is. You can see it's a very complicated thing around the back end. And we have Abigail to thank for that. But the truth of the matter is it's a pretty simple and easy way for us to implement two-factor authentication for all of our CMSs, which is short for content management systems. And here I'll really an anecdote. I run a WordPress site for a charity and at least twice a week, I get emails from GoDaddy, who are the hosts of this site, saying an email, an IP address from somewhere in the world has tried 12 or 15 times to log in to my site, and then they're blocked. I don't worry about this because I have two-vector authentication. And even if they were to eventually guess my password, which would be really amazing because I use very, very long passphrases. And we'll talk about those in the next tutorial. The truth is that if you have two-vector authentication, then the bad guys can't just hammer on your login portals over and over again. 
and it turns out it was really simple and easy for us to implement a HD password to protect our systems from modern honest brute force attacks. Their space is clearly only two things you need to know about HT password. One is is session dependent, and the other is that your browser will remember it if you ask it to. So, as you can tell, we've already logged into this page, but if I go and log in again, it doesn't ask me for uh, to log in again, because I've already done it this one time for this session. And session is simply a fancy word for when I start the browser, then when I exit it, and it will only ask for it once. So if I go to my faculty page again, it works. Didn't ask for it. Now, if we get out of here and I uh, exit perhaps I have ended my session. So it means the next time it'll want me to log in. So we go here, launch Firefox, and then go back to here. There, see, it wants it, and it's good. And then we can go here, and again, it works just fine. Okay, no problems. What's even cooler is if I log out of those pages, but don't close the browser, then all I have to do is go back again. This is really a nice and easy way to get around this. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how you change it. So if I go here, you can see it will allow me to change it uh, without having to. So when you get the email from me in at the first day of the fall semester, and then again on the first day of the spring semester, when I change it, all you have to do is um, go and search up here and say we type double. You'll see there's the only oh, I spell double wrong. You'll see it makes it just that one. So you can change it and it's easy to do. So that's it for this very short tutorial. I'll unshare and as usual, I'll leave you with an open invitation to, uh, if you need help, just drop me a line. I'll meet with you in Zoom and get you going. Okay, thanks.